Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening and welcome to SBC Praise Ministers Bible Study. I'm Youth Pastor Sean Douglas. Welcome back. I'm Youth Pastor McKeema Douglas. Wow, it's been a blessed uh, first week we had a Bible study. We want to thank Pastor Duncans for allowing us to present a Bible study to you, the people in the community, to our fellow members at Shiloh Baptist Church, and to anyone listening out there. We just want to want to thank Shiloh for the opportunity to give a word and to hear a word from God. So we Amen. just want to just take that opportunity to say that. And just as a way of review, here is our Bible study is how the four R's to a victorious 2021. The reset, the restart, the refocus, and the readjust. Amen. And last week we talked about the reset. And just in the way of review, if you weren't here, we want to invite you in, come get, go get your coffee, your tea, whatever you're drinking, call your friends up, invite them to the Bible study. It's happening right now, tune in, please. Call a friend or a neighbor. We want you to hear the word of God. So in the way of the reset, review, um, of last week, uh, we were talking about Nehemiah, and we, we know this about Nehemiah, that in the first chapter, it talks about Nehemiah is the cupbearer to the king of Persia, and he hears a word from his brother about the distress and the despair of the people in Jerusalem, and he also hears a, a, about the ruins, about God's house being in shambles, and it breaks his heart, and the one thing I want to say about this uh, that we did say last week is we understand and we know that in order to really to have a reset you need Jesus Christ Amen. our Lord and Savior in your life for the reset so if you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ as your, as your personal Savior your reset could be accepting him as your Lord and Savior and for us who are believers we know that our reset comes within us believing in Jesus Christ and having faith and knowing that he will always be there for us and he is our keeper, he is our savior, he is our way maker. So the true reset that we're talking about is you having Jesus Christ a part of your life. Amen. In a way of that, uh, we talked about the reset and we talked about Nehemiah, his focus on the kingdom. When he heard the news about his people being in distress and being in despair and, the, and God's house being in ruins, the Bible says that he wept, he mourned, he fasted, and he prayed. And it's important to understand that Nehemiah had a concern and care, a, a concern and care for people. And that was part of the reset of him understanding the vision of what God wanted him to do. And so it's so important that we understand that all of us have the vision from God. God has placed something in our heart, a burden on us that we need to fulfill in the kingdom. And also we talked about the writing down the vision. We, we gave you an example of, of we have a vision board at our house. And what we do is we write down, you know, things we want to see happen in our life. And we write scriptures to it. We write down the vision. And we, we want to make sure that God is a part of everything that we say and do when it comes to the kingdom of God. So it's so important that when you get the vision from God, that you write it down. And details are important. Yeah, it's a blessing to be able to not just visualize it, but being able to write it down with detail. There's power in reading it, thinking it, and writing it. Yeah, and it's so... And so as we look at this, we always want to understand that we, in the end, it talks about Jesus, I mean, excuse me, Nehemiah, he, when he heard it, he wept, he mourned, he fasted and, spread, and prayed, and then he spoke to God. And this is where we want to pick up. Um, before we go into the restart, the new, the new lesson for the night, we wanted to end this. We didn't get a chance to end it correctly um, the way we wanted to. So we want to deal with this particular, his prayer. And it's so important that you understand what he prayed to God in the reset. Nehemiah 1.10. We got to go back. What I'm sorry. Just go back. One. There we go. Nehemiah 1 and 6. We start. So we are going to, in our recap, talk about the first chapter. But I do want to read out the scripture to you. And it starts at verse 6 of chapter 1 in Nehemiah. Let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to hear the prayer that I, your servant, now pray before you day and night for your servants, the Israelites. 
I confess the sins that we Israelites have committed against you. Both I and my father's house have sinned. Yeah. And what we see here is Nehemiah is praying to God. After he learns about the distress and the despair of the people, he begins, he begins to fast, and then he begins to pray, and then he begins to speak to God. And what he says here is very important, and it's also a reset for us, is that he's a servant praying for servants. Uh -huh. he, 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 it, it's something when you can pray for others, and, and you have the, the, the faith and belief to understand that it's not about you, it's bigger than you, it's about the kingdom. And that's one of the points that we harped on last week, is that you have to die to self. And it says, um, you know, in the Bible it says, you know, seek ye first the kingdom, and then all these other things will be added to you. We got to seek the kingdom, and part of seeking the kingdom is our care and concern for other people. And we see that in Nehemiah's prayer, that he's just not concerned about himself. He says, I'm a servant praying for your servants. And I would like to add to that, too. It's not just condemnation he's pointing at them. He includes himself yes. in the prayer. I need prayer, too, just like you do. Sometimes we think leaders don't have to pray for their weaknesses or they aren't aware of them. But a real sincere prayer includes you in the mix because you're just as guilty or accountable or part of the solution or part of the problem. Amen. Amen. And then we go to verse, verse 10 and 11. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering you, revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I even like how it came out of character. He didn't call him king. He was like, this man. I think sometimes we... We allow ourselves to believe leaders are here and then we're down here, opposed to we all right here. Yeah. And uh, this man, like, I'm a man. We include ourselves in it. So um, we don't want our titles to confuse us with our needs. And, and I love what he says. He says, give your servant, you know, success by granting me favor. He understands something very important that when God gives you the vision, it's going to take his favor in order to get it done. It's like I said last week, with every vision, there's provision. And he understands in order to get the work done that he has to get done to rebuild the walls and to restore the people, he needs God's favor. And so he asks, God, give me favor in the presence of this man. And then he says, I, I was the cupbearer to the king. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah's prayer, it was about the care, the, the care, concern, and connecting to other people. Your servant praying for other servants. Be relatable. Yeah. God's people. His repentance. Not only have I sinned, but my fathers have sinned. So when, when we go for in terms of the reset and the restart, and we want to be victorious in 2021, besides resetting, knowing that Jesus Christ is the reset, we got to restart. And restart comes with us asking, Lord, forgive us. Forgive me. I have sinned against you. I want to be in your will. I want to do your will. And once we get that, then we can move forward. And then, as I said before, asking for God's favor is so important in anything we say and do. I don't care if you're feeding people, homeless people. I don't care if you're preaching to a thousand people. You're going to need God's favor in order for it to be successful. So I did a little research about being a cup bearer. Now, generally, we say a cup bearer bears a cup. But Nehemiah made it a point to say to us that he, at the time when this was going on, was a cup bearer to the king. Now, we're going to connect this with, in order to carry out the vision, in order to rebuild others, and most importantly, the kingdom of God, we need to have integrity. And integrity is not just you having high morals, but understanding that the morals are still going to be here, but you fall short sometimes, but you're willing to admit to that and continue to work on that. That's integrity. Amen. Don't let anyone think that you're just without blame. You're without excuse or problems or issues. Integrity says, I acknowledge that and I'm working on that. So if someone asks you about that, keep it real. How are we going to reach people if we can't be honest? Don't have people thinking that you got it all together. No. 
And can I add something? To you? Yes. I just want to. I heard someone say about integrity is what you do when nobody else is looking. That's that's a part of integrity. It's are you reading? Are you praying? Are you diligent? Are are you faithful to God when nobody else is looking? It doesn't matter if you're in front of church praying in front of thousands of people, or you're you're you know you you got this business and you got all this success and money. But what are you doing behind closed doors that glorifies God? That, that makes God first and puts him first in your life. And people are always watching. We know that. However, we need to be mindful of that as well. Trustworthy. As a cup bearer, he was trustworthy. Amen. When God's giving us these responsibilities and the vision and the provision to carry it out, he's expecting us to be responsible enough to carry it through in spite of your shortcomings. Keep going so he can get the glory and get all of the favor. Amen, amen, amen. Be trustworthy. And 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal, heal their, their land. land. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves in order to reset and restart, you're going to have to humble yourself before God. Kneel before him. Understand that he is your Lord and Savior and you depend on him for everything. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, in the verse it says, we can do nothing without Christ. We can do nothing without Christ. In him we live, move, and have our being. And in him we can do all things. Yes. Amen. And greater things Jesus promised we would do. Amen. He did. Amen. Amen. So now we're at the restart. Restart. The restart. We saw Nehemiah chapter one. We did a review. We heard about the he heard about the cry of the people. He he, he began to mourn. He began to weep. He, he began to cry. But then he fasted and he prayed and he talked to God. And he, and he's talking to God, like I said, he did his repentance, but he also said, Lord, I need your favor. In order to get done what's on my heart, the burden that you placed on me after I heard what was going on, I need your favor. And favor is God's acceptance, mm -hmm. his approval, his special benefits, and his blessings. Amen. That's what God's favor is. We could also say, and we're, we, if we're talking, it's his grace, right? Because that's what grace is, his favor over our life. So, so like we don't deserve it. That's right. But we know that because he loves us, and because of his perfect plan and he knows us if we ask those things he will do them according to his will and purpose amen amen so part of the restart that we're talking about is asking for God's favor mm -hmm. that's a restart for many of us we got to put down our pride our selfish desires our jealousies our envies or you know all of our hang-ups and hookups and say Lord I need your favor Whatever, my promotion on my job, you know, the, the things that are happening in my household, my finances. God, I need your favor. And I, you are enough. Yes. Right where you are, you are enough. You are enough. I can't say it enough. I keep hearing it. You are enough. Amen. So Psalms 84 and 11 says this. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. I'm going to read that again. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. So God is saying that you, that favor, the Lord bestows it. Man doesn't give it to you. So if you're looking approval from man or from people or from co-workers, no, it's God. God gives us the favor and, and the honor. So it's important that you understand that during the restart, God, I need your favor. Yeah, and during the restart, don't wait on someone else's approval. Don't wait for someone else to say you did a good job or I saw what you did. We're looking for God to get the glory out of us and bestow his favor on us. So all we got to do is walk it out. Amen. Amen. Walk it out. And I know you see the word blameless down here. That doesn't mean that we're perfect, right? Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But God wants us to have that integrity and be trustworthy enough to understand that we're going to pick ourselves up. We're going to repent. We're going to ask God again, Lord, forgive us. 
let us move on and let us move forward because that's so important. It, some people think that you got to come to God or you got to come to Christ. You got to dress a certain way. You got to sound a certain way. You got to have this, 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 the, you know, this holier than that. No, God says, I come as you are. Right dance. Yes. God says, come as you are. And that's important for us to understand. So if you're listening to us out there, you're at home and you're saying, you know what? I want Jesus Christ in my life. You can get him right now, right where you are. It doesn't take all it doesn't take you falling on your knees in front of 20 elders in the middle of a church. You can call on the name of Jesus in your house and get deliverance. You can get your freedom. You can get your peace in the name of Jesus. You can restart. Amen. <laughs> so we start out Nehemiah chapter 2. We asked you to do your homework last week and read Nehemiah chapter 2. We hope you did your homework. Because well, we're not going to read everything. We're yes. going to summarize some of this. Yes. Your homework was to read these chapters. Amen. Amen. So hopefully you reviewed um, Nehemiah chapter 1 and you read Nehemiah chapter 2. But Nehemiah chapter 1, chap uh, chapter 2, excuse me, starting in verse 1, it, verse one, it reads, in the, in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when the wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not, he had not seen, he had not been, I had not been sad, excuse me, in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This, this can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruin and its gates have been destroyed by fire? So we see Nehemiah chapter 2. He opens up and Nehemiah is presenting the king his cup. Now mind you, in chapter 1 at the end, he says, Lord, grant me favor with this, this man. man. And then he says, I am the cupbearer to the king. And in chapter 2 it opens up. He's presenting his drink to the king and the king sees his face and his countenance is sad and he couldn't question him because my wife pointed out before being in the king's court and then being in the king's service as a cupbearer that was a great responsibility it wasn't a responsibility to take a life because the king had to worry about being poisoned or being you know somebody murdered, murdered or, or something happening somebody trying to overthrow him so the cupbearer was a very important person so you had to be trustworthy yeah. you had to have integrity to be in that position to be that close to the king exactly uh, to be in his presence wow that's saying something right there so so god lets us know that in order to be in his presence we got to have integrity we got to be trustworthy and we, we, we there's, there's something about us that has to be different mm -hmm. than the world mm -hmm. and so we see that and so he, the king's asking, he says, why, why are you so sad? Why, 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 what, is the, what is the problem? What's going on, Nehemiah? And Nehemiah explains to him, I can't be happy right now. My heart is hurting. I, I, you know, Because remember, in chapter 1, it talked about he mourned mm -hmm. a deep sorrow, a deep regret. Mm -hmm. There was a deep regret before he prayed to God, when he prayed to God. And now we see that deep regret, that deep mourning, that sorrow, that pain that he's taking, and the king sees it on his face. Yeah. And sometimes in life, people can see the pain on your face. Yeah. They can see the hurt that you're going through. And we want you to know, let you know that there is someone who can take that hurt away. Amen. There's someone who can take that pain away. Amen. And his name is Jesus. And I would add that if you hurt, I should hurt. Right. If she hurts, I should hurt. Hurt enough to where it should affect me. It should change my countenance it should change my behavior my mindset because you are a part of me that's you right. me i'm you we we that's why i always tease my sisters amen amen but we need to have that literally we are brothers and sisters in the lord right amen. so you should have that pain if we're one body you should be able to discern if your toe hurt the rest of your body know your toe, toe hurts as well right amen. so we should be that concerned that intimate and focused on others. That's right. And, and it, it, it moves our heart. And I'm going to lead you right into the next point that I know you made so you're going to make so well. I like what he says here at the end of verse two. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king. 
fear. Fear is something that can become so big and such a big problem, it can prevent you from doing what you need to do. But what Nehemiah realized was, I'm going to acknowledge my fear. Sometimes that's the starting point, the restart. Acknowledge it. Shame the devil. Like, he can't accuse you no more. You can be blameless of this. Once you admit, I am afraid. I am fearful. But I'm going to keep going. Amen. Amen. Your purpose has to, you have to come to this understanding. Your purpose is stronger and greater than your fears. Nehemiah understood that he knew it was a heart thing. So much so that the king looked at him and knew this ain't just, you ain't sick because you ain't been sick. Amen. This got to be a hard thing because you, you came before me and did that. In those times, you could just come in front of the king with that kind of a demeanor or disposition. That could get you killed or thrown out of the court. Amen. But because he had favor and he asked for favor. Amen. We need favor because we need people to make distinctions. Something different about you. Yeah. And so, I, like, I like what you said. It's, it's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. in, in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says this. A good man brings good things out of the out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of evil, evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So if your heart is full of good, you're gonna speak good things. You're gonna think good things. And part of the restart is having a heart that's after God. Because if you have a heart that's after God, good things are going to follow you. Good things are going to be presented to you. Good thoughts are going to follow you as well because your heart is connected to your mind. It's connected to your emotions. But if you put your mind on God, you put your mind on the kingdom, all those other things are going to be added. So you can, you'll can you have a better idea of how to cast down those thoughts and try to exalt itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But you got to put it there. Amen. 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 Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. The king said to me, what is it that you want? Mm -hmm. Favor. Then I pray to the God of heaven. Let's stop. Prayer. <laughs> we see a reoccurring theme with Nehemiah. Every time before he speaks, he prays. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a little advice. Before you speak, pray. Because sometimes we got a tendency to start running off at the mouth, start flipping our lip. Pop off. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, say a little slick stuff without even thinking about it, without even praying about it. But I want you to know that Nehemiah sets a pattern for us Amen. that we need to understand. Before we speak, we need to hear from God. Amen. We need to speak to God and let God clearly speak to us. Mm -hmm. Then I pray to the God of heaven and I answer the king. If it pleases the king and if your servant has found Thank favor... You. In his sight, let him send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. So I can restore it. So I can make it better. Because this was a burden that was on my heart when I heard the cry of the people. I was disturbed. I was troubled. And I asked God, Lord, forgive me and give me favor that when I get before the king, he will grant me permission to do what I need to do. And we see that in chapter 2. He's before the king. The king notices his disposition, his chains, is sad. The king is saying, well, what's wrong with you, Nehemiah? What's, what's going on with you? And Nehemiah says, I, I can't be happy right now. I, I, can't, I can't enjoy what, what, what you have to offer in the palace right now. I, I know I got it good. I know I'm living good, but my people are suffering. My people are hurting. And we see this today in the world. We see people who are hurting and suffering through the pandemic, through their jobs, through finances. We, we have people who are hurting out here and we need to speak life to them. We have to make the connection. And I know so many people have been hurt in the church. We have stories about that. You've been hurt on your job. You just turned off with people. People, I always say people equals problems. If you are gonna work with people and deal with people, understand people are just gonna be people. Amen. So they are gonna have some drama. However, as builders, because that's what we are, builders of the kingdom of God, servants of the most high God, Amen. you're going to have to love the thing that God loves, which is people. Amen. 
Amen. I like that. Which is people. And if you don't have a burden for people, God, help me to restart and reconnect with these things that you want to be a part of my heart and my mindset so I can do your will. Man, that's so important. So as we talk about the four R's of a victorious 2021, we talked we talk about the reset. And now we're on the restart. We're in the book of Nehemiah chapter 2, and we're talking about the restart. How do we restart the vision, the work? And Nehemiah chapter 2, it's about the work. Now that we've got the vision, now that we understand what, we, what God wants us to do, he wants us to put him first, and he's going to add all these other things to us. You know, Now it's time to get to work, put our hands to the plow, roll up our sleeves, it's time to feed the homeless. It's time to go out and preach the name of Jesus Christ to those who are lost, who are hurting, who need a savior. It's so important that we understand that we roll up our sleeves during this time and we don't forget about the people who are hurting, the people who are struggling, the people who cannot speak for themselves. They need an advocate. But we know our greatest advocate is Jesus Christ, Amen. who's ever interceding for us before the throne of God. So in verses 7 through 9, we, we see God's favor. We're not going to, we told you to do your homework. We told you to read. So if you read verses 7 through 9. This should be familiar. Yes, this, this, this should be familiar. Because as Nehemiah asks for favor from the king, the king says, what do you need, Nehemiah? What is it that you want? He says, I want to go, be, go back and rebuild the walls. And the king says, well, how long will it take? And the queen come, comes in because, remember, he's the cupbearer to the king. He bears a great responsibility to the king, mm -hmm. and he's trustworthy. He has integrity. So the king says, you know what, you, get, you need to give me a time, Nehemiah. If I let you go here, I need, you know, I need to know that you're coming back. Mm -hmm. And Nehemiah says, I set a time. And when he set the time, he says, king, if it pleases you, could you give me a letter for the timber? Because when we go back, I know we're going to need to rebuild the walls. We're going to need that, you know, houses are, are destroyed. I know there's some things that need to be done. And the king says, sure, I'll grant you the letter so you'll have the timber. And he says, well, king, I didn't say passage. He says, sure, I'll give you a letter of conduct that nobody's going to touch you while you're going. And then he says, more than that, the king says, I'm going to send the army Hallelujah. officers and a cavalry with you Amen. while you go. Amen. If that's not God's favor, I don't know what is God's Hallelujah. favor. Because we see it every day in our life, but we may not acknowledge it, uh -huh. but God is blessing us each and every day. And all it takes is for us to take a second to understand it. When we woke up, it was God's favor. When he put food on our table, it was God's favor. When we got a job when no one else is working, it's God's favor. So you gotta understand that when we walk through this life, we have God's favor, Hallelujah. his blessing, his acceptance on our life. And now we go to restart. Psalms 90, verse 17 says this. May the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. May it rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. May the favor, the acceptance, the approval, the blessings, the benefits of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Not just me. Everyone. His favor rests on each and every person who wakes up and the sun is shining. Or if there's rain coming down, that's his favor. Let it rest on us. And let it rest on the work that we're trying to do. Each and every one of us has an assignment from God. What is your assignment? I don't know. But God has placed a vision, a burden on you. Let his favor rest upon that burden that he's put on your life. Nehemiah chapter 10. I'm going to let you go from here. Well, we're going to paraphrase. I'm sorry. No. Please. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 10. And when Samballot the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite officials heard about this, they were very disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. When Samballot the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite heard about what? Heard that Nehemiah was coming back and he was going to help restore God's kingdom. He was going to help rebuild the wall. He was coming to do something and promote the welfare of the Israelites, the people who were suffering, the people who were walking in the rubble because they were there in Jerusalem 
And, they, they, and, and you got to remember in chapter 1, when his brother gave the report, he says, they were in great distress. Mm -hmm. they, 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 were, they, were in, they were in disgrace. They felt ashamed. And the city was utterly burned. It was in ruins. And the doors were, on, were burnt. Uh -huh. It was rubble. And that's where they were living. That's what they were walking through every day. The rubble, the despair, the, the disgrace, the embarrassment. Mm -hmm. The suffering. Yes. And we know. Amen. Because I did, these are quite a few scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. So, Yes, we, we're there. And we just want you to know that Sam Ballot and Tobiah, the, the Hornite and the Ammonite represent the haters, yep. the naysayers, mm -hmm. the doubters, the, the people say, it don't take all that. Yep. Or why are you doing that? Or, you know, I'm, girl, I don't know why are you still going to that church. You know, the people ain't right. It, that, that's, that's, what, that's what Sam Ballot and, and, and Tobiah, the Hornite and the Ammonite represent. Because you got to you, you you should remember, if you don't remember, that the, the Hornites and the Ammonites and the Jebusites were all in the land that God said the Israelites would have to possess. Mm -hmm. And these were the people that they had kicked out of the land. And now we find these same Hornites and Ammonites. Now that the, the king of Persia it, it, it has, it is in control, that there are governors and regents in the area, uh -huh. and they want to disturb what Nehemiah has going on, uh -huh. and which was his concern for God's people. So there's always going to be attack. It's just part of the plan. Yes. It's part of the plan. But when that happens, we can do this, which is found in 1 Peter 5, chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. We can cast all of our cares, all mm -hmm. of our anxiety, our worries, our stress, um, our aggravation, irritability, uh, guilt, feeling like you're going to quit. We can cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. But he also warns us to be alert Amen. and of sober mind. That means we need to expect this to happen. Be strategic. I, the enemy and his plans, there's always devices. He takes time and he's uh, persistent. We need to be as prepared and be as persistent when you need to have a weapon. This is a weapon. When those attacks come, mental or actual people or things, you can say, I'm going to cast all of these things that will be distractions. Amen. I'm going to cast all of them on you, Lord, because I know you care for me. So I can go ahead and be alert and be sober mind and be mindful that the enemy, he does prowl around roaring. This is noise. Roaring Amen. and looking. A lot of talk, nothing behind it. A lot of bark, no bite. Amen. God, with his favor, will make sure all things work together for your good. Amen. For his purpose. Amen. For his glory. So Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And I went to Jerusalem, and after after staying there three days, mm -hmm. I set out during the night mm -hmm. with a few others. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do in Jerusalem. I'm going to say that again. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. Everyone cannot handle your truth, your dream, or the visions of what God has purpose for you to do. Some things you have to hide in your heart until he makes it clearer and clearer as how to bring in other people or who to share it with. But this is part of being sober-minded and alert and strategic in this plan. He said he ain't tell nobody what God put in his heart. Amen. Even though he had some few of his closest that were with him as support, not yet there's a timing on all of this. Amen. There's a timing. And you need to be sensitive and ask God for discernment. There are so many scriptures that talks about how important it is to guard our hearts. Above all that you guard, Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart with vigilance Amen. and diligence. And when asking for discernment about how to do this or who to do it with, 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 13, it says, who else knows the thoughts of a man but the spirit of the man? Who else knows the thoughts of God but the spirit of God? This is a spiritual situation we are in that we're embarking. And you need to be aware of who you are and who God is. Amen. And mind you, he, God will give you discernment so that you can make a distinction of, oh, if it don't fit right, we say, trust your gut, trust your gut. 
through the Holy Spirit if you're asking for him to give you that insight, that wisdom that you need to carry out these things. And one, 1 John 4, 1 through 5, just talks about try to spirit by the spirit. You don't believe every spirit that you see. Those, the character or the facade or demeanor that people come in. Try the spirit by the spirit. And if you ask for that wisdom and insight, God will do it. And however he's got to make it plain to you, he will because you asked it. Amen. Amen. And, and it, as we talk about being victorious in 2021, the four R's, we, we're talking about a reset. We're resetting and now we're restarting. Restarting what? The work of God. Doing what he called us to do. Doing what he told us that we should be doing. And it's so important that we understand that it takes the purpose and plan of God, but also guarding our hearts and our minds. But like you said, being, being able to try the spirit by the spirit. It is so important that we do that. And we're not going to go through all of verses 13 and 14 and 15. Um, we're, we're going to paraphrase it just a little bit because you should have been doing your homework. Can I add one point? Sure. It's actually going back with the last verse where it was talking about guard our hearts. I thought about what Jesus had said. He said it's it's not what goes into a man Amen. that defiles a man. It's what comes out of him. And what comes out of you is what's in your heart. I, I, I believe that we're in a phase where we really need to check our hearts. Amen. Amen. Find out where we are, you know, with others, with God, right? Staying and repositioning ourselves, finding our purpose. So yeah. there's some hard work. work yeah. That we have it's to be mindful of. Whenever you're confronted with doing the work of God, it's always a hard thing. It's never a head thing. It's a hard thing. Is your heart in the right place? As we the scripture said, good things come out of a good heart. You know, good conversation. Evil things come out of an evil heart. We gotta, we gotta gird ourselves up. We gotta prepare ourselves for the battle that we're in in 2021. And it's not getting easier. If you look at what's going on around us, politically, socially, economically, um, the have and the have nots, we're in a world that is looking and needs Jesus. Amen. And we have to be a light, a city that's on a hill, that's lit, that everyone can see, to know that there is a savior. There is a hope. There is a promise. There is there is a there, there is something that is more than we that we as human beings can give that only Christ can give, Amen. and that is life eternal. So as we go through this, uh, in, through verses thirteen through sixteen, it talks about Nehemiah going out and surveying the land. It talks about him going out by the gates at night. He went out because the verse before that it said that. He had told no one about what God had purposed him to do. Mm -hmm. And he wanted, he made it so that nobody knew exactly what he was doing. But it said he was there three days and then he went out by night just to survey what was going on in Jerusalem, to see the lay of the land. And it's so important that we understand our environment. Amen. Right? Because sometimes we can be in a hostile environment. We're getting beat up on a daily basis and we don't understand or evaluate that we're in harm's way. Mm -hmm. That we're not discerning that the people, the friends, the associates, the, the things we hang around, we associate with, are not for our good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we find ourselves in positions where we shouldn't be because we're associated with things and people that we should not be associated with. And so Nehemiah does something very strategic here, and I suggest you do it as a restart. Evaluate who you are, where you are, who are your friends, who, who are you hanging with, who are you talking to, who are you getting advice from, are you listening to, to Oprah Winfrey and all these other people, are, are you listening to God, are people speaking life into you? It should be some balance. Yes. It should be some balance. Yes. Verse 17, we're going to pick up at verse 17, and it says this, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17, it says, then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. Come, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Come, let us rebuild the house of God. Come, let's restore the relationships that were lost because of our selfishness, because of our deceit, because of our anger, because of our confusion. Let us start rebuilding the things that were torn down, that were broken down. 
So we are no longer, we, see, we will no longer be in disgrace. disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. When you have had an experience with God, you've seen God show his favor, his provision. You've seen his blessings. You know, we were talking about just the daily ones. You know, we have, we, sometimes we categorize them as the big blessings and the little blessings. You should be able to testify about them. And if you really, truly begin to think of and can acknowledge what God has done in spite of your fears, other folks can't help but hear and want to either join you in your quest, whatever God's called you to do, support you in some kind of way, but most importantly, give glory to God. Amen. So we want to be in a position to where when we do share what's in our heart, we can give glory to God and others will want to join in. Amen. 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 Because Nehemiah went out alone to assess the damage of the walls. But like I said, he did his homework. He did his research. He, he, he surveyed. He, and then he made observations. And as you said, he drew a conclusion. So. If, I know some of the takeaways we're going to have today is checking your heart, checking your environment, checking checking out the plan and purpose God has for you. That's doing your homework. We, I, we don't personally know when this word goes, goes out what it's going to do in your lives, but God said it's going to accomplish what he purposed it to do. But these are some points you are going to have to do some extra work. Do the research so you can connect the right people or the right services. Make some observations. Write this stuff down so you can go back to it, so you can include it in your prayers when you ask for wisdom. Draw some conclusions. There should be some, when we talked about timelines, some finality with some things. Don't just, ah, time. Ah, do it later. Folks, is leaving here like that. Yes. So you want to make sure you accomplish what God purposed you to do in this season. And we all have an assignment. So, in doing that, when we do our homework and research, we make the observations because we've taken assessments, you draw a conclusion, and you, you're in a position to where you're ready to share what God is going to do for you. When you share your vision, it's going to unite the people that you're working with. Amen. Amen. And, and that's so important. Because the scripture said, let us rebuild. Let us start the work. It, 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 it it's not just one person. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village. And we have to understand that it's more than one single person that can accomplish what we need to accomplish in this world. And it takes unity. It takes us in the bond of unity and fellowshipping with one another and understanding that iron sharpens iron. Uh -huh. And you are important. Yes. You are important. So no, you can't check out. No, you can't say, no, later, I don't want to, I'm not ready. Your role is important. You are important. Amen. They were on one accord. They, they had one single mind and single focus, and that was to build God's house again, to restore God's house. To build the walls. Yes, to build the walls and restore the people mm -hmm. because the people were in disgrace mm -hmm. and hurting and broken, mm -hmm. and we see it today. People are out here broken discouraged, confused, lost, suffering, needlessly, knowing, and we know mm -hmm. that there's help available Amen. to you. And that help is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we, it, it's funny, we can connect um, Nehemiah to Jesus in, in this sense um, that in the beginning, Nehemiah, you know, focus came back on the kingdom. And we know that everything starts with the kingdom, with Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. He, he is the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the way maker. He is the lamb of God. And so we understand and you should understand that help comes. The reset comes. The reset begins when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so I encourage you out there if you're listening to me and if you're there with your friends, your family, if you're young, you're old, it doesn't matter. God can take you just as you are, right where you are. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Nehemiah said, I was afraid, but I spoke. Amen. I was, I was fright, I was frightful. I was before the king. The king asked me what was going on. I could have shut up and said nothing. But I spoke. 
And because I spoke, God granted me favor. And I'm telling you this, once you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you're going to see the favor. But you got to keep going. Going until you know Amen. what your purpose is. The plan is, the vision. Then you have to work it. Because you can even, I've been saved 40 years, I've been saved 50. Your work is not over. As long as you're still here, there's work for you to do. Because when, when there's no more left, you're going to be gone. <laughs> Take care. <your own. laughs> it's over at that point. It's done. But if you're living and breathing and you can, one word, just one word can change someone's life. One phone call. Amen. One smile. Amen. Do you know people are a smile away from giving up? Wow. A, a, a testimony away from disaster? Wow. And what if you were that one person and your work for that day was to pray for that person or to speak to that person? I want to challenge you. Be on your mark. On your mark, get set. Let's go. Amen. <laughs> and you had that scripture too that you were. So when the vision united them, this is a scripture that I, 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 that came to mind that was suitable. Romans 15 and 6. Give, I paraphrase, give you a spirit of unity so that with one heart and one mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to function in the spirit of unity. To where it sounds like there's one heart, yes. one mouth, all to the glory of God, our Father, and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it is so important as we talk about the four R's, our reset, our, our, you know, our, our, our restart, our refocus, and our readjust, that we put God first Amen. in everything that we do. We can't say it enough that if you put God first, you're going to see the blessings. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to see the, the miracles. You're, you're going to see the provision. Mm -hmm. Just as Nehemiah saw the provision. Chapter 1, he says, Lord, I need your favor. And in chapter 2, we see God give him favor before the king. Yep. Where the king gave him everything that he asked for. Yep. And it's just like in your life. Once you accept Jesus Christ... And you submit yourself to his will. He says, ask. And you shall receive. Mm -hmm. It's so important that you understand our restart and our reset are so important. As we close tonight in prayer, we want you to understand that God, Jesus Christ, is available for you. Amen. Right now, today. As simple as ABC. Admit, believe, and confess. Admit what? That I'm a sinner. Believe what? That Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. For the world's sins. And confess what? That he's Lord and Savior of my life. And if you've already begun your walk. Continue. It's okay if you have to reset again. It's okay if you have to restart. But the goal is to keep going and continue the work. Amen. That's it. Fulfill that's, your purpose. That's Nehemiah chapter 2. Roll up your sleeves. Yep. And get the word. Because we got some building to do. Amen. Can you pray, sir? All right, let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for your word. We thank you because it is a light to our pathway. I thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. For in our belief in him, can we move and live and have our being. That we would be in right standing with you, God, because our righteousness is that of filthy rags. So have mercy on us, God. I pray that you allow this word to just hide in our heart. Hide this word in our heart so that we might not sin against you, but instead bring glory to your name. I pray, Lord, that you make the vision plain for us. Help us to write it down with detail specifically, Lord, so we can be used for your glory. We thank you for your equipping. We thank you for understanding we thank you for wisdom and all these things god we want to seek you amen. first amen amen seek you first in your kingdom and all and your righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you so we're going to cast all of our cares on you we're going to submit our will to you and we want you to have your way in our lives so we thank you for doing that and this time in this season in 
Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, good people.